Hello everyone, Assistant Narrator Richardson signing in. And I had to look up what a dingo was. And they look like wolves mixed in with just a normal domestic dog. They look so cute. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Item number SCP-6443 Object Class Safe This has been stricken from the record and now is neutralised. Special Containment Procedures Instances of SCP-6443 are to be kept together in a furnished canine containment unit. All assigned personnel must be amiable to canines and must have scored an 8.0 or higher on the animal empathy test. A test to determine how suited a member of the Foundation is to working with animal-based SCPs. Assigned personnel must feed and give water to all instances of SCP-6443 twice a day, bathe them once a week, and spend a total of 120 minutes or more playing daily. Personnel assigned to these duties are to be given devices with the purpose of playing an audio file containing a voice reading the sentence, remember to feed SCP-6443, every 10 minutes with the message varying depending on the personnel's assigned duty. These devices are not to be removed from the personnel's possession, and may only be powered off by senior staff once the assigned task has been successfully completed. The devices will automatically turn back on at the beginning of the personnel shift, and at other periods when they need to provide care again. All personnel must indicate the date and time they fulfilled their duty, on the care record attached to this file. Automated feeders were suggested, but rejected by the head researcher Dr. Merkel, on the grounds that SCP-6443 instances would benefit from human interaction, provided by researchers manually feeding the instances. Should instances of SCP-6443 show signs of dehydration or malnourishment, all available personnel are to feed and provide water immediately. No personnel are to leave the facility until this task has been carried out. Description SCP-6443 instances are quadrupedal species bearing resemblance to the Canis lupus dingo, commonly referred to as dingoes. All known instances of SCP-6443 have dark brown and black speckled fur covering their backside and tail, with white fur over their stomachs. All instances of SCP-6443 display antimimetic. Antimimetic is a term used to refer to an effect that causes an individual to experience some form of memory loss or forgetfulness. Properties causing their caretakers to forget to care for them. This includes forgetting to feed, give water to, bathe, or show affection for SCP-6443. Currently, 13 instances of SCP-6443 have been found and contained. Their antimimetic properties do not affect their visibility or knowledge of them. It only affects actions taken to care for them. Addendum 1. Discovery Log On the 11th of the 12th, 2016, the Foundation was alerted by field agents stationed in Adelaide, Australia, of a previously undiscovered species of canine, which was dying in mass upon being domesticated. Peregrinus Animals, a company known for the trade of exotic animals, had discovered SCP-6443 instances in the wilderness. The group killed the parents and captured all other instances of SCP-6443. Details procured from a nearby office of Perignus Animals detail that the company had focused on capturing every instance of SCP-6443 they could find to avoid other similar companies taking the opportunity. SCP-6443 was stated to be an extraordinarily rare find due to the rarity of new species of canine being discovered in recent time, as well as the rarity of canine species native to Australia. Many breeding companies and seekers of exotic animals had already shown interest in buying instances of SCP-6443, and many of these requests had been fulfilled at the time of Foundation discovery. No indication that the company understood the antimimetic effects of SCP-6443 has been found. 
Foundation agents tasked with containing instances of SCP-6443 tracked their location using documents procured from the Perigonus Animals Company. SCP-6443 instances were found within multiple buildings of the company and the homes of wealthy citizens. A collective 137 instances of SCP-6443 were found, 124 of which were deceased, to the distress of many families and individuals. Foundation personnel removed all instances of SCP-6443 and delivered them to Site-124 for containment. All individuals with knowledge of SCP-6443 were amnesticized and all documentation of SCP-6443 was destroyed, with all financial transactions being reversed. Addendum 2, Incident Report, 11th of the 13th, 2016 As of 8pm on the 11th of the 13th, 2016, all research staff assigned to SCP-6443 failed to fulfil their duties to care for SCP-6443. The following is an audio and video log of an interview conducted with junior researcher McManus, one of many junior researchers assigned to SCP-6443. Interview Log 6443.1 Interviewed, Junior Researcher, McManus Interviewer, Dr. Benside Begin Log 8.13pm Please state your name and position. Jack McManus Assigned to SCP-6443, what did you need? Please allow me to ask the questions, McManus. Sorry sir, but I'm here past the end of my shift. I was supposed to leave at 8. Are you new here? Yep, SCP-6443 is my first assignment. I see. You will soon learn to speak in a more professional manner when involved in an interview with senior staff. Staying a bit late after your shift will likely be one of the easiest annoyances you will need to deal with. On to the topic at hand. You are currently assigned to providing SCP-6443 with food, correct? Um, sorry. Yes, that's correct. And despite this, SCP-6443 has not been fed once today. Why is that? Well, pretty much all day. I've been going to give SCP-6443 their food. But every time I go to do it, I always find myself doing something else. And here we are. I see. Looking at the disciplinary logs, it seems you've received multiple warnings for failure to fulfill your duty. And despite this, you have still not completed the task. That is correct. You don't seem concerned. Were you planning to leave today still having not fed SCP-6443? Oh god, you're right. I completely forgot. I'll take care of that once we're done with our interview. Understood. Please understand that failing to complete your assigned duty will cause a disciplinary infraction to be added to your personal file. Uh, understood. End log. Closing statement. Junior researcher McManus left the office soon after the interview was conducted. SCP-6443 was not fed, and McManus has been likewise disciplined and removed from their assignment to SCP-6443. Addendum 3, Incident Report, 11th of the 14th, 2016. As of 6am on the 11th of the 14th, 2016, of the 13 living instances of SCP-6443, 7 were found deceased due to malnutrition. The remaining 6 are malnourished and near death as well as in an extreme state of distress. The following is an audio and video log of an interview conducted by Dr. Benside with Dr. Merkel, a senior researcher assigned to SCP-6443. Interview Log 6443 Interviewed Dr. Merkel Interviewer Dr. Benside Begin Log 9am Please state your name and position. Oliver Merkel Researcher with Level 4 Clearance I am currently assigned to the research and caretaking of SCP-6443 due to my Animal Aptitude Test Score of a 10 and my experience with canines. What exactly happened here, Dr. Merkel? Dr. Merkel appears visibly dejected. 
I'm not exactly sure. I've been granted a large number of staff to study and take care of SCP-6443, including multiple junior researchers. Each staff member was assigned to particular duties relating to SCP-6443, but not a single one has been done. Few of my staff had a notable record of disciplinary actions before they were assigned to SCP-6443, and none of them seemed particularly lazy and yet, I consistently found them doing something besides their assignment throughout the day yesterday. Hence the disciplinary action report. Yes, every single person working on SCP-6443 was eventually dismissed from duty for the day. At one point, I took it upon myself to take care of SCP-6443, but before I knew it, my shift was over and I needed to get home to get ready to go see my son's basketball game. I didn't realise that the instances of SCP-6443 hadn't been given any care all day until today. They haven't been taken care of at all since we contained them. And have the remaining instances been taken care of today? Oh shit! Dr. Merkel runs out of the room. Addendum 4 Email to Site-124 Director from Junior Researcher Calvin From Junior Researcher Calvin To Christine at Foundation.gov Sent 1.12pm 11th of the 14th 2016 Subject Dr. Merkel Concerns Hello, this is Junior Researcher Calvin Currently assigned to research on SCP Classified For the past three hours Dr. Merkel assigned to SCP-6443 has been continuously running back and forth between the lounge and SCP-6443's containment cell while panicking. I attempted to stop him to see what is wrong, but he refused to listen to me, saying he needed to take care of SCP-6443 immediately. I don't understand what is going on, but this behaviour is very concerning. Thank you, Junior Researcher Calvin. Site 124 Addendum 5 Incident Report 11th of the 16th, 2016 As of 7am on the 11th of the 16th, 2016 of the 6 remaining instances of SCP-6443 4 were found deceased due to malnutrition The position of the corpses seems to imply that they were engaging in close contact before death possibly for comfort the two living instances were seen laying in front of Dr. Merkel, facing him and whimpering. Both showed signs of extreme malnutrition. Dr. Merkel was asked to leave to conduct an interview regarding the incident. The remaining instances of SCP-6443 whimpered loudly as Dr. Merkel closed the door to their containment chamber. The following is an audio and video log of an interview conducted by Dr. Benside with Dr. Merkel. Interview Log 6443.1 Interviewed Dr. Merkel Interviewer Dr. Benside Begin Log 7.30am Please state your name and position. Dr. Merkel, Level 4 Researcher. Please compose yourself, Dr. Merkel. Dr. Merkel appears greatly distressed. His hair is unkempt. His uniform is wrinkled. There are large, dark bags beneath his eyes, and his hygiene is noticeably poor. I'm... okay. Dr. Merkel, as I understand you were assigned to SCP-6443, please explain the events that led up to all but two instances of SCP-6443 being deceased. Please, Doctor, I, I can't. Dr. Merkel, when is the last time you slept? Dr. Merkel does not respond, his legs shake. Doctor, this is very unprofessional behaviour. Please answer the question. S sorry um... Maybe the 13th. Dr. Merkel, you're saying you have not slept for two straight days? I, I need to go f feed SCP-6443. Dr. Merkel rises from his seat and immediately collapses. SCP... P6443. I have to f feed the dogs. I I have to. I I have to 
Feed my dogs. Dr. Benside stands and walks to Dr. Merkel, squatting next to him. Dr. Merkel lays on his stomach and pulls himself towards the door. While panting loudly, his body shakes. Audio corrupted. End log. Addendum 5. Incident report. 11th of the 16th, 2016 2. As of 9 am on the 11th of the 16th, 2016, the two remaining instances of SCP 6443 were declared deceased due to malnutrition. All junior and senior staff assigned to SCP 6443 have been relocated with no disciplinary actions, except Dr. Merkel, who has voluntarily resigned from his position and been properly anesthetized. The object class of SCP-6443 has been updated to neutralized to reflect the recent change. Interview log, point three. Audio file recovered. Review recovered audio. Audio playing. How badly do you want to save those dogs? What? Answer my question, Merkel. I can't watch another one die. Dr. Benside, I can't handle it. Are you prepared to save these dogs at all cost? Yes. Please follow me, Doctor. Item number SCP-6443 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Instances of SCP-6443 are to be kept together in a furnished canine containment unit. This containment unit includes a fenced-in outdoor area that the canines have constant access to. Dr. Merkel is to oversee the caretaking of SCP-6443, and his living quarters are to be directly connected to SCP-6443's containment chamber to facilitate constant care and monitoring of SCP-6443. Dr. Merkel may choose to request other personnel to aid in caring for SCP-6443. If needed, these personnel must be amiable to canines and must have scored an 8.0 or higher on the Animal Empathy Test. Description SCP-6443 is a species of canine with antimimetic properties, causing their caretakers to forget to care for them. This includes forgetting to feed, give water to, bathe or show affection for SCP-6443. Mnestics, a medication used to counter antimimetic effects, have been used to successfully counteract this effect. The two remaining instances will be referred to as SCP-6443-1 and SCP-6443-2. Addendum 1 Incident Report, 11th of the 16th, 2016-3 Following the events outlined in Incident Report, 11th of the 16th, 2016, the remaining two instances of SCP-6443 were fed by Dr. Benside, a researcher assigned to the Antimimetics Division. They were then relocated to Site-41 for care by members of the Antimimetics Division. After being administered amnestics, Dr. Merkel, now assigned to the Antimimetics Division, has been able to effectively care for instances of SCP-6443. Dr. Merkel's primary and only duty will be to care for and report on the health of SCP-6443 until he reports that they are both restored to a sufficiently healthy state. Addendum 2 Log of care for SCP-6443 from Dr. Merkel 11th of the 16th, 2016 Instances of SCP-6443 have been properly fed, bathed and provided with a clean and well-furnished containment chamber. I took it upon myself to spend time with SCP-6443 to provide them with comfort. However, I fell asleep soon after sitting down in their containment chamber. 11th of the 17th, 2016. I awoke in SCP-6443's chamber to find both canines laying beside me. I chose to continue laying there so as to not disturb them. Within an hour, both instances awoke and walked around their containment chamber, sniffing the blankets, toys and bowls. They are still getting used to the new chamber. 
Olen provided both of the canines with their breakfast. They did not eat at first, but once I sat down next to them, they slowly consumed their food. I am giving them three small meals a day rather than one or two large meals to help them adjust to a healthier diet than, well, being starved. Both canines frequently drank from their water bowl. They are looking better already, but this process will be slow. Neither seem to be afraid of me. 11th of the 20th, 2016. The instances of SCP-6443 no longer hesitate to eat their food and they both appear to be properly nourished. In addition, they have begun to show signs of excitement and playfulness, occasionally wagging their tails and jogging around their containment chamber. Neither is running yet, but they are improving. I have named the male, SCP-6443-1, Teddy, and the female, SCP-6443-2, Paige. 11th of the 24th, 2016. Paige and Teddy have shown great signs of improvement in health and energy. Both canines are now eating regularly, getting excited for meals, playing with their toys and each other, and frequently running around their containment chamber. With the use of treats, they have learned to go to the bathroom outside. I have taken them both on a walk outside of their containment chamber, with their leashes secured around my waist to prevent them from running. Both showed hesitation to walk any further than a few dozen feet from the door, and both reacted with fear when seeing other personnel. 11th of the 28th, 2016. I have taken Paige and Teddy on a walk outside of Site 41. They enjoyed the open air, frequently pulling on the leashes as they walked around the forested area. In addition, they have become comfortable with the other staff assigned to their care, and only show minor fear of other personnel. As of the 11th of the 28th, 2016, I believe I can comfortably declare both instances of SCP-6443 to be restored to a healthy condition. I will continue to monitor both regardless, but any immediate risk of death has been negated. Addendum 3, Video Log, 11th of the 29th, 2016. The following is a transcription from a video log recorded to confirm Dr. Merkel's statement on SCP-6443's health. Choice hours were included to help demonstrate the health of SCP-6443. Begin log. 6 a.m. Dr. Merkel lays in his bed. The blankets are pulled up to his chest. SCP-6443-1, hereby referred to as Paige, lays on a dog bed nearby. SCP-6443-2, hereby referred to as Teddy, lays on Dr. Merkel's bed with its back against Merkel's side. 6.30 a.m. Paige wakes up, scratches its head, and walks over to Dr. Merkel's bed, wagging its tail while staring at the doctor. Teddy lifts its head and also wags its tail, making a thumping sound as it hits the bed. Dr. Merkel slowly opens his eyes as Paige licks his face. He smiles and quickly reaches to his nightstand, grabbing a pill bottle and swallowing a hexagon-shaped pill with a glass of water sitting by his bed. 6.32am Dr. Merkel gets out of bed quickly, followed by Teddy and he briefly pets both. The instances follow behind him as he walks to the canine's food bowls. Len fills them with a measuring cup giving both a cup and a half of food, carefully measured. Neither canine eats anything until he adds a spoonful of peanut butter, mixed with vitamin powder provided. The doctor walks away as the canines eat, sitting at his desk and turning on his computer. 6.45am The canines briefly use the bathroom, using a swinging door provided on the door leading to the fenced-in area. They return shortly after, both standing next to Dr. Merkel as he sits at his desk. Both stare at Dr. Merkel expectantly, wagging their tails. He reaches a hand down and pets both. Typing with the other hand, Teddy whines, then lifts its paw up to the computer tower and presses the power button. Dr. Merkel stares in disbelief as the computer powers off, then laughs, further exciting the canines. 6.50am Dr. Merkel stands outside in the fenced-in area, 
throwing a frisbee for Paige and Teddy. The canines both eagerly chase after it every time, attempting to grab it before the other. Dr. Merkel pretends to throw it multiple times, with the canines never falling for the trick. After pretending to throw the frisbee for the fifth time, Teddy jumps into the air and grabs the frisbee, running around the fenced-in area as Dr. Merkel chases him. 8.03am Dr. Merkel sits on his couch, playing a podcast out loud from his phone on the coffee table. Paige lays with its paws on Dr. Merkel's lap licking Dr. Merkel's cheek as the doctor cranes his neck in the opposite direction. Paige eventually lays its head on his lap, after which Merkel begins to pet it. Immediately, Paige's tail starts wagging, and she starts licking Dr. Merkel's face once again. Dr. Merkel laughs, tilting his head away as Teddy jumps on the couch and begins to lick Dr. Merkel as well, overwhelming the doctor as he chuckles, petting both at the same time. 9.31 a.m. Dr. Merkel re-enters the containment chamber after briefly leaving to use the bathroom. Upon the sound of the door opening, both canines jump up and run to it, wagging their tails. He quickly closes the door behind him as both instances jump on him. Dr. Merkel laughs, kneeling down and petting the canines as they lick his face. 10.14 a.m. Dr. Merkel sits in his bed, his back upright against the headrest. Paige lays at the foot of the bed, while Teddy lays with his back to Dr. Merkel. Dr. Merkel quietly pets Teddy as he reads. Dr. Merkel's statement on the stable health of SCP-6443 has been approved. Dr. Merkel will continue to monitor and care for SCP-6443 as his primary duty, and will now also be assigned to other additional duties. Addendum 4 Incident Report, 3rd of the 25th, 2018 As of 3pm on the 3rd of the 25th, 2018, the remaining instances of SCP-6443 were found to have mated and produced 10 offspring. The offspring have been determined to possess the same antimimetic properties of SCP-6443. Multiple new personnel are to be assigned to care for the new instances of SCP-6443. And that is it for the article. What a nice ending, huh? There's no horribleness at the end, no murder, no end of the world scenario, just lovely dogs, basically. So cute. Anyway, that's it for this one, goodbye. Hello everyone, Creepy Otter here, and I just want to say a big thank you to Sean Saxon444 for writing this SCP. It was their first SCP, and it was amazing. A really nice story. Go check Sean's stuff in the description below, because not only are they an author, but they are also a really good YouTuber. They do uh, podcasts, SCP-related and other things. Plus, the, the Sean's live streams are really good, so all of the information regarding that will be in the description below. If you want to support me financially, then go to my Ko-fi. The link is in the description below. And if you donate, you can get your name read out in future videos. Also, you will get your donation read out on a weekly live stream that I'm going to do. So yeah, also my Twitter is in the description if you want to uh, see updates and stuff like that. So talking about my Kofi, we have our first donator. So thank you to Saab9-3 for your support. See you in the next video. Goodbye.